So now we're going to show you how to go from your computer here through your network, this is a Wi-Fi laptop, into the recorder there, change the display output resolution so you can see it on the monitor there. Let's take a look at what we have to do on your computer. So what we now have to do is download something called a config tool. It's a sniffing tool for the networks to find the DVR if you don't already have it set up on the network. Rare hope thing you already do and you don't have to follow the step, but we're still going to feature it so to show you how to find a DVR if it's the first time you're connecting it to your network. So we have something called a config tool. You can find it at the following URL that you see here on, in our notepad. I'm highlighting it right now. That's the config tool. You would put this in your browser. If you want to know more how to use it, let me show you. You can find it on our website here. I'm going to go to my web browser, go to our website. And here, if you look at the heading of this article, it says how to find your IP camera on the network. This is a config tool that not only finds your IP cameras, but also your DVRs. And this whole tutorial page shows you how to even install the tool and use it for many other uses. However, this video, we're making it just so we can break down how you can find your DVR on your own. And in case you can't, then you can always purchase some networking help. So let's go back to the notepad. I'm going to take this URL, you can, or you can follow along and type this into your browser. So I'm going to copy it for my sake, go into my web browser. You can use Chrome or whatever, doesn't matter at this point. So I'm going to create a new tab, and I'm going to paste it in. You want to make sure your browser says the exact same URL in there. So www.cctvcameraworld.com forward slash config5. Hit enter. And then it will bring you to this page on Google Drive to download this software. So you have to use a Windows computer, make sure you are. Now let's go and download it by pressing the down arrow. Depending on what year you're watching this video in, this, this page or these pages may seem a little bit different because Google always updates their website. I'm going to hit download anyway, ignore any dumb errors from Google. And on the bottom it's telling me it's downloading the software. Once it's downloaded, I am going to click on it. Or actually, I'm going to go find it by going into my download directory. Here is my download directory. It downloaded the file and it's called general, under, general underscore config underscore or config tool underscore v5. So I'm going to right click on it and extract it to a zip file by using Windows Explorer, like that. This is how your Windows will do this. And now I'm going to click on Open. So I right clicked and I clicked Open. It's gonna ask me this security thing. I'm gonna say, yeah, okay, whatever. And then stop here. It's gonna ask you what language you wanna install this in. Click the drop down. make sure you do this in English, otherwise, I don't read Chinese and I'm pretty sure you don't either, so hit OK. Now you click, keep clicking next until you install the software, agree the terms and conditions, keep on going. It may take a minute or so, or more depending on how fast your computer is. Once it's done, it's going to say you can go enjoy this software. So let's go enjoy it. All right. When this software boots up, it's going to automatically scan your network and find the recorder there. So let's stop for a second. It found my recorder there. I'm going to click out of it so that it doesn't appear as gray. Sometimes um, you're clicking on something to highlight that it's clicked on, it'll appear gray. So here's my NVR, the one where my resolution is messed up. It says NVR and then it says an IP address. That's the telephone number for this thing on the computer network. If you've got it properly connected, it'll give you this. If you don't, there's something else you've got to go follow, another guide. But our network happens to be a 192.168.1 network. And this is set to comply with a one network. Now, before I go and do too much, I can't log in until I specify the correct password for my recorder. I'm going to go click on the top where it says search setting and put in the password. It's gonna be stated on the top of your NVR, and then hit OK. And now, it researches the devices on the network, and I'm gonna go click on uh, NVR again, and uh, what I'm gonna do is, 
I'm going to click on this thing here that says E. It loads it up in Internet Explorer or a web browser. Hit that. Web login. You got to have Internet Explorer, and it's going to ask you to install some applets there. Hit allow, and then allow for all websites. It'll, it'll, it may ask you this a few times. In this unit case, it's uh, 2019 firmware, so it only asked me once. Now I'm going to log into it. So what I'm doing here is I'm logging over the local network into the NVR's web interface so I can change its settings using my computer here. This is exactly what you need to do because you can't see anything on the DVR screen connected with a mouse and HDMI monitor. This is the only way you can get into its settings to change back whatever you did wrong. Hit login. Again, that username and password is found on the, net, on the label stated on the top of the NVR or if you change it from that, then you have to go discover what that password is at this point. If you can't get into this page, then you're kind of locked out. Now, I'm going to go and install my plugins. I could do that. I'll show you here how to do it. Hit run on the bottom. Make sure you have antiviruses turned off. Antiviruses may interfere with the installation of these web plugins. Falsely detect it's a virus. If it says that, get rid of that antivirus. You've got to use something like Nod32 ESAT. If you've got AVG, Panda, or any other animal called antivirus, you need to get rid of it. No animals make antiviruses, okay? You gotta go get a real antivirus there from ESET. Now, once you're in this screen, you should see a grid. Go to setup. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go into find the display resolution. It's under system on the left-hand side, then under display. And now it tells me my display resolution. If you have your display resolution set to this, to 3840 by 2160, that means it's at 4K and you're not seeing anything because your monitor doesn't support the 4K output. So what you need to do now is click on that and then bring it down to 1080p. We're hoping your monitor supports 1080p and it's not something from like 2011 or 2001 that doesn't even support 1080p. Once you've got the correct display resolution selected based on what your monitor can support, hit OK. While I'm here, you may also be watching this video because you've managed to enable tour on your NVR or DVR and lock yourself out. So if you find yourself doing that, what you do is hit default here, hit OK. okay. Once you get that green check mark saying its configuration was saved, go to tour on the top. On the bottom here, hit default as well and hit OK. You want to make sure this enable check mark, uh, check box is not checked. It should be unchecked, okay? If you have it checked and you are only use, you still have, you have one of those small NVRs with only one HDMI and one VGA, you're locking yourself out. Don't use that option. Go to display. This is how your pages should look. Go back here, change it to 1080p or whatever resolution works for you from this list, you gotta go sync it up with the specifications of your, mo of your monitor, press OK, and guess what? Here's what we see. The monitor flickers, and it comes on with this great screen, and you've got the display resolution working again. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you're unable to follow these directions, that means you need some networking help, a remote desktop support that's available at a charge uh, that you can purchase online from us. Thanks for watching.